the world's most lifelike picture. SU HD TV. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. Welcome to Recipe for Success. Now we all know how difficult it is nowadays to find a job, let alone that dream job. Now this show provides the opportunity to a young chef to do just that, to find their dream job. Each week, a student will cook a dish for one of South Africa's top chefs, and if they're good enough, they'll walk away with a job offer. They've got to impress the chef with their preparation, cooking skills, and presentation to get this job. It's all up to them. I'll also be chatting to some of our country's leading entrepreneurs to find out a little bit more about their food and wine preference and to get their recipe for success. And then there's still the viewers competition. But let's get down to business. This week's student is from Cape Town. Hello, my name is Kaylin Kamis. I am 18 years old. Um, I study at Capsicum, the diploma in preparation and um, I stay in Bonneville. Our family, um, we are, we're a small family of four. My parents are my older brother. I was raised with my grandmother from since I was born because my mother had to go back to work. During high school, I studied art to become a graphic designer for two years. And I thought that I can take the knowledge of art and apply it to food and make it into one. And it kind of benefit me at the end of the day. And I love being a chef right now. <laughs> The dream job is definitely working with the greatest chefs, Cape Town International. Um, this is an amazing opportunity, just to be on the show, but it's also not breaking because you don't know what to expect, but you're also overwhelmed with so many emotions and feelings, but it's amazing, yes. Kayla shows immense leadership qualities. She's able to run a team seamlessly and she's a very trustworthy student. I wouldn't want anybody else working next to me besides her. I look forward to seeing what she can do and pushing her career just based on the qualities that she, that she showed me at college today. I know she's going to do really well and the show has got a privilege to have her. Kaylin, it looks like you've got all your ingredients uh, done, uh, your prep is done. You, you don't look too nervous. No, Chef. How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling good, thank you. Good. Now listen, you're cooking today for uh, Peter Templeoff. A guy that takes no nonsense in the kitchen. He's well known in South Africa as one of the top chefs. Uh, so, you know, you've got to impress him today. Uh, but I'm rooting for you. I know you can do it. Thank you. Let's quickly have a look at where you might be working after today's episode. From the moment you step through the front door into Greenhouse Restaurant, you know you're in for a fabulous experience. A state-of-the-art dining room and cutting-edge kitchen sets the scene at Greenhouse, where produce of the Constantia Valley and the region are presented as culinary creations in an intimate taste space. Greenhouse stretches the boundaries of traditional South African cuisine and shares local stories and culinary insights through the dining experience. Ranked at number four in South Africa by Eat Out, Greenhouse invites guests as a multi-sensory journey of distinctly South African flavors as they savor and indulge in the delectable creations of Peter Tempelhoff and his team. Having traveled the world, Peter Tempelhoff has a deep understanding of food and is always pushing the boundaries of the culinary arts, offering diners new and exciting dishes that are an adventure to the palate. Hi hey Pete, welcome man. Thanks for joining thanks, us. Thanks, Ruben. Good and, to be here. And, and I know you're a busy guy, so thanks for this. I appreciate it. No problem. Kaylin? Peter, Peter, Kaylin. Kaylin, good to meet you. Good to meet you, the chef. Yeah, awesome. So what do you got for us today? Um, today I'm making you a deconstructed nachos with a avocado mousse and a kidney bean emulsion. Awesome. All right. Now listen, uh, Kaylin, like I told you, you've got to impress this guy. You know, he's going to observe you and he's going to decide in the end if he's going to give you a job or not. It's not up to me. I'm only going to observe. So, Pete, over to you. Cool, Kayla. Well, it sounds like you got a nice Mexican dish here. And I'll have you know, it's one of my favorite flavors in the world. I grew up with these ingredients. And yeah, I look forward to tasting it. Um, how long is it going to take? About an hour, Chef. Awesome. Good. Well, get cooking. Thank you, Chef. So when Chef Pete said, you can get started cooking. So like, the, I knew what the first step was. and. That would be like getting your onions dropped in a garlic and in the pot, basically. But I was so nervous about having them so close by that I left the stove on with nothing on it. Uh, but then I got focused, I started on with my method. The first thing that I did was heat up some oil. While the oil was heating, 
I started cutting my onions, trying to show off my knife skills, as that is a big part of being a successful chef. I then added the onions to the pot to soften while I cut my red peppers into small squares and then add it to the pot. And then I minced my garlic and added it to the pot and kept an eye on the mixture while it cooked. So like once the onions and everything was done, um, usually this is the next step is to add your meat to the pot and the first thing you normally do is to season your meat, which I actually didn't do. Biggest mistake ever. And now I'm just hoping that by adding the spices I've left that I can fix this and still impress the chefs. So I added my wet ingredients, which were tomato puree, tomato paste, chutney, and Worcestershire sauce. Then I added my spices, which were smoked paprika, cumin, chili powder, and cayenne pepper. I mix it well and add a salt and pepper to taste. So where's the recipe from? What um, inspired you? There was one December um, for Christmas, and uh, my family was like, you know, they're getting a bit boring of, you know, the leg of lamb and the roast of chicken. And they said they wanted to try something new. And then I thought, because um, I do have a little bit of love for Mexican food, yeah. and I thought I'll do the um, do a natural process for them. Mm. And um, before I came to the idea with the deconstructed one, I made little parcels out of the phyllo pastry, and you'll have the chili con con inside um, with your sour cream and your guacamole. Mm. And before I could even look again for seconds. Every so Christmas far, you're doing that, eh? Uh, <laughs> no, but it's gonna be like, we need something new again. <laughs> so, so I'd like that for Christmas. Yeah, Instead I would of a roast. Eh? I would love it, right. Next, I added my red kidney beans and cooked them to soften up. Then it was time for me to start my avocado mousse. I decided on a mousse rather than the traditional guacamole to show the chefs that I'm innovative and to add a smooth texture to the dish. To complement my mousse, I made a kidney bean emulsion by blending red kidney beans together with some sour cream. Simply add items during wash. Add wash. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. You won't believe what you can make in a microwave. Hot blast. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. Um, Chef Pete told me that chili con con was one of his favorite dishes, what he actually grew up with because his mother cooked him, for the, um, cooked him that dish. It was like a challenge for me because not in a sense that I had to compete with his mother, but I had to bring it up to a standard where it would be different, but also something we'll like at the same time because, because you know, guys, they like their mother's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> My next step was the file of pastry. I took three sheets of pastry and laid them next to each other and brushed them with melted butter. Then I sprinkled some Parmesan cheese and coriander leaves for extra taste and color. I put the layers on top of each other and cut them into triangles. Next, I molded the triangles into a round ramekin and placed them in the oven to bake to get the right shape I wanted for plating. The tomatoes that I used on the plating, um, before the idea of roasting them off, there was a different idea of like, you know, making mini cocktail salsa tomatoes, but that would have taken it would have consumed much more time, as we I thought maybe roasting them off would have been much better, as it would have given a bit of a charred colour, a little brown colour texture, and it would have been quicker and easy to plate as well. Then having this little tomatoes with salsa inside pulling all over, and then it's like a little bit of a mess. Hi, chefs. I'm done with my preparation, and I'm ready to start plating. Awesome. That's, yeah. That seemed to have gone quite quick, eh, Pete? Yeah, fairly quick. I was impressed with how fast you worked. Especially your chopping skills. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so are you ready to start your preparation for plating? Yes, Chef. So while you're doing that, last week I had lunch with Patience Stevens, a well-known TV producer, to find out what's her recipe for success. So Patience, thanks for joining us. Um, I know you're a very busy lady. You know, I've got to say, I've always been a fan, and I've been many times on Pacella, especially in Top Billing, uh, very, two very successful shows. Um, 
But I'm very interested to know, you know, where did all of this start? Sure. It started a long time ago. I did um, a degree in drama at Wits University and then I joined the SABC in the sports department. And I worked there for 11 years and they moved you around in all the different departments and I tried to learn as much as possible and they really gave you many opportunities to learn. And then when I left the SABC, I went on my own and I started my own business. And um, it, it was always about hard work that I didn't have enough money to buy the equipment in the beginning, so I had to work really hard to be able to get the equipment mm. together. And when I was working, I was working on other people's stuff. So when they went home, I'd go into their edit suites and use them while they were off. And then they'd come back in the morning and I'd leave having done what, what I was working on. But when it really took off was um, in 1992, when I proposed the idea to the SABC of um, top billing and they accepted the idea and that, that absolutely, that was wonderful for me. And in 1994, Basitsana Kumalo won Miss South Africa and I watched her winning Miss South Africa and I thought, this is a star. She has to be an integral part of top billing. She has to present on top billing. And I approached Doreen Morris, who we'd been working with at the time, and said to Doreen, please, would Bussy be interested perhaps in presenting? And Doreen said yes. And Bussy started working on the show. And then I thought, we need to be partners in business. And again, Bussy agreed to be my partner in business. And we started a production company called Swella Pearly Productions, which is about moving forward, progress, two women in business, one white, one black, working together to create what we hope is a magical product. And now here we are in 2016 and we're still working together and we're still doing top billing and it's like our personal miracle. Talking to entrepreneurs and people that want to get into the TV business, again I'm saying it's not that easy, uh, but describe a little bit your, you know, your job, what you do every, every single day. Putting these shows together, for me it's like a work of art. It's like baking a cake and putting the finishing touches and producing something which people want to eat. And we have a lot of planning meetings, so we'll plan. This is going to be the content, this is going to be the approach. Everybody's briefed on it. And the other thing is we listen to people. So we're interacting with them on social media. We look at their comments. We listen to what they say on Twitter. We listen to what they say on the Facebook page. We're asking them to tell us what they want to see. And I think in that way, we can keep the content fresh because we're responding to what the viewers tell us they want to see on the show. Do you cook at all at home? I mean, I know you spend a lot of, a lot of, you always get these great chefs and people cooking on the show. Do you do a lot of cooking at home? And, you know, why do you enjoy cooking? I can't cook. <laughs> so my mother called me patience because she waited so long to have me, but it's a misnomer. And I can't cook because I'm not patient. So I'll put the thing on the stove and then I can't watch it cooking because that's boring. And then I go away and do something else and I come back and it's burnt. So I only do things which don't physically need cooking. So I can make a salad or a fruit salad or a milkshake. I can make shakes. I can do interesting shakes. But physical cooking I can't do. And one of the guys in the office who really understands me, he gave me a boiled egg maker where you push the button so that when that boiled egg is cooked, it the bell rings so that you know and it doesn't burn because I even burn two-minute noodles. I just yeah, it's not my skill. So when we um, eat, we generally eat out. And I like sushi because oh, when nice. I've eaten sushi, it makes me feel clever the next day. <laughs> that's, so that's why people enjoy eating sushi. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think there that all that fish oil, there it is, the omega-3s, yeah. and I think it does make a difference. Wow. Patience, and then when it comes to, you know, uh, you know, what? So what would you say is your recipe for success? I think... The recipe for success is hard work, like you've said. I think you have to surround yourself with people with passion and enthusiasm who really love doing what they do, who are prepared to put in the hours, not because um, they want the money for it necessarily, but because they're really passionate about what they're doing. I think that it's important, and this is my failing, if I went back again and started in business again, I would have been an accountant. I would have started off by doing an accountancy course because I think it really helps you if you can be on top of all the finances in your business yeah. all the time. And 
Then the other thing is managing people. I think if you're going to start your own company, you should also do a management course because it's difficult working with people. You have to motivate them. They have to want to come to work and be there and be happy. And if you don't have any skills with managing people, you might make people unhappy. So I think that's very important. And the other thing is making the client happy that if you don't make the client happy, whether it's your client, if you're working with sponsors, or your client in the terms of viewers, you have to make that client happy in whatever business you're in. That sounds like a really good recipe. And you know, you've done very well. So thanks again for, for your time. I appreciate it. It's been fun um, having a chat with you. And may there be many more successes. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. Thank you. Well, that was another really inspirational story. Okay, Kaylin, you can start plating and then we'll see you at final presentation. Yes, Chef. When it was time for me to plate, I was very nervous. I only had one shot to make sure the presentation looked perfect. I started with the avocado mousse and spread it into a curve of the plate. Then I took the crushed up nachos and sprinkled them on, before carefully adding the final pastry to create height to my dish. After that, I spooned the concani mixture into the pastry and added drops of kidney bean emulsion. I garnished with roasted tomatoes and micro herbs. Finally, a fridge you can personalize. Top Mount Freezer. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. Works and plays together perfectly. Note 7. Here classic. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung. When it came to representing my dish to Chef Ruben and Chef Peter, um, before lifting it up, you, I had this all kind of thoughts of whether they, whether they like the presentation of it, whether they know what the dish is all about, but you know, presentation is the important final factor. And it was a lot, like a lot of the, uh, nerves going around, like, will they like it, will they not? But I'm going to give it a shot. So this is the dish that I've prepared for you guys. Um, I've tried my best. I hope you enjoy this meal because I know that you grew up with chili con carne, especially nachos. And this is what I've done for you guys. Mm. Cool, that looks great. Wow. So we have the deconstructed nachos with a nacho crust, a avocado mousse, and a kidney bean emulsion. Nice. Hey, we've done a lot with a Mexican dish. That looks like a French dish. Thank <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah>. you. <laughs> Plating's completely different. That you can see there's quite a lot of texture on there as well. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't know what to expect, but I think she's nailed it with the plating. She's got a little finesse in there, a few couple of blobs, you know, real chefy blobs. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's the proof of the puddings and the eating, though they say. So I'm looking forward to tasting that. Thank you. Yeah, me too. It looks. Yeah. It's, you know, for me it looks delicious. I like the kind of height on the plate, and um, I'm really interested to taste a little bean. The emulsion. Bean emulsion. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. So we taste. Yeah, sure. Mm. And wines? Are we going to taste, talk about the wines Tell now? us about the wine. Tell us about the wines. Yeah. So with the natural parcel, I thought of a pinotage while well, probably 2014 because a red wine will goes well with red meat, enhance the spices within the food and gives that extra kick. Mm -hmm. And if you want to tame your spices, you go with a white wine which is much more sweeter because of the citrus and the berries that's involved in it, which is also vibrant and palatable with your natural parcels. Okay, so you paired two wines with it? Yes, Chef. Which one do we have first, the white? Yeah, let's go with the white. You never complain about... Yeah. About too much wine. Too much wine. <laughs> <laughs> you can add a plate there. Yeah, go on, Ruben. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking that this is either the beginning of a new journey or a complete I can accept both bad or good criticism and I was happy with my presentation and I was hoping that they would like it too. That's got a nice line of smokiness to it. Did you add any um, chipotle, some smoked chili to that by any chance? Smoked paprika, sure. Smoked paprika. Yeah, that's nice. I think you've got the seasoning right as well. Got a good balance of spice. Um, and then you got this cooling factor of your um, avocado mousse in there. Thank you, I Chef. I think it's good. Mm, I like the smoked paprika. Mm. Mm. And the 
And the heat, I like the heat. Thank you, chef. But you can still taste everything. I think the wines, I don't think the white wine works that well for it. Mm -hmm. I think the Sauvignon Blanc is a bit crisp and a bit light for all your robust spices. Yeah, sure. But I think your Pinotage is a much better match. Mm -hmm. okay. It's got good body and it does, like you said, it holds up to the, the, mm -hmm. the aromatics and the meat and the, the tomatoes as well. So yeah, sure. Pinotage is the winner. Yeah, mm. sure. Thank it's you. amazing. Huh? It actually softens mm -hmm. that the spice mm -hmm. really goes well with the, with the, the meatiness. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Good, well, giving me a lot to think about. <laughs> <laughs> so practically, I'm just thinking of logistics. You stay in Bonteville. How far is that from Constantia, where our restaurant is? Um, it will be a half an hour drive. Half an hour drive. Yes, chef. Okay, so it's not really a matter of relocating. So if we do give you a position in our, in our restaurant, you'll be able to work 14 hours a day. No problem. Get yes, to work, chef. get back home, and get back to work fresh again the next day. Yes, chef. Yeah, good. All right, well, you've given us a lot to think about. Um, and yeah, I think I need to mull this over a bit. Yes, chef. So, Kellen, I'm sure you're dying to find out the verdict from Chef Peter here. Uh, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer, though, because it's now time for our viewers' competition. There are almost 250,000 rand in prizes to be won in our Recipe for Success viewer competition, which includes a full lifestyle solution worth over 100,000 rand from Samsung, comprising of a Galaxy S7 Edge smartphone, a Galaxy Tab S2 tablet, a color laser multifunction printer, a 55-inch curved SUHD TV, a water wall dishwasher, a top mount freezer, and a hot blast convection microwave oven. From Capsicum, a City and Guilds diploma bursary in food preparation. From fine and fabulous Neo Group SA, Jean de Bois Le Qual 24 piece French cutlery set. From Grand Cru Glassware, eight Riedel varietal specific glasses. And from Mervyn Gurr Ceramics, a handmade crockery set for four. Only one lucky viewer will win all of these prizes. You can enter via SMS or on our website. To qualify for the grand prize, you need to correctly answer one of our viewers' competition questions. The more you enter, the better your chances. The competition closes on Sunday the 4th of December at midnight and the winner will be announced right after the last episode on the 6th of December 2016. For more information and terms and conditions, please visit www.recipeforsuccess.tv. This week's question is, what was Patience Stevens' recipe for success? Was it A. Never drive in the left lane. B. Drink two liters of water a day. C. Work hard. Please SMS Samsung followed by your answer A, B or C to 41703 or enter on our website www.recipeforsuccess.tv So Peter, have you made up your mind? Yeah, I think I have, Ruben. Um, you know, there's a lot to think about and I like a lot about um, Kaylin and she's got a lot of strengths and she's got a solid personality, um, you have a lot to learn and uh, we don't take anybody into our restaurant and if you cannot swim you'll be sinking very fast. Yeah, so I think my decision is, yeah, I think we're going to offer you a position in our restaurant. Thank you, Chef. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank um, you, Chef. Arrive on Monday, bags packed. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, Chef. You're awesome. welcome. Well done. Thank you so much. Awesome. Pete, thanks. Thanks for your time. Cool, Appreciate Ruben. it. No problems, man. Good mate. to be here. Thanks. Thanks for watching. See you next week. I'd like to say thank you to Chef Ruben, Chef Pete, and to Samsung for this amazing opportunity. This is going to be a lifetime journey and experience for me, and I appreciate every effort and opportunity that's coming my way. Thank you. Everything you need to succeed. Samsung. Business in a box. Recipe for success. Proudly brought to you by Samsung.